In today's video, is fasting a better way of losing body fat? Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Ravella from ProPhysique.com and as you can see, I'm back home. Was on the road for about two weeks and even yesterday's video that I got out with Brett Contreras where we talk about building muscle in a calorie deficit. Well, I filmed that in San Diego, edited, uploaded yesterday. So I'm back in my home and it feels good to be back. So I wanna to talk today a little bit about a question I got on my Instagram direct message. So we're gonna go over that. First things first, I also got some clothes in the mail. If you guys are looking for some good workout clothes, Core Nutritionals just came out with this new uh, performance line. It's, it's hard to get across, like this is a weighted shirt. It just fits so nice. I can't wait to go to the gym today. So yeah, something to think about. Um, but the idea of fasting is not new. It's been around for quite some time and it's got a lot of people that love it and a lot of people that uh, don't love it. And so what we're going to talk today about is a question I got on my Instagram direct message. So if you guys are interested, send me a question on the DM and I will put it on the uh, video here when I get a chance. So the question is this, I've been reading that fasting is a better way of losing fat than cutting calories because you don't lose as much muscle and you don't reduce as much your metabolism. Is this true? What are your thoughts on the topic? So, so thank you for the great question and we're gonna address this from a couple different directions. First, let's talk about your first statement where you say, is fasting better than cutting calories for fat loss? There is no fat loss diet unless you are in a caloric deficit, okay? The, the process of getting body fat off is that we are taking in less calories than we are burning in a given day. There are many variables at play there. But what fasting does in many cases is it allows you to be in a caloric deficit without being so food focused throughout the day. And so I think there's a lot of different ways of fasting that I've seen work, including like 24 hour fasts or alternate day fasting. I think the more common ones are where you kind of fast for like 16 hours a day, but you eat all your food in an eight hour window. There are many ways to approach it, but really all the benefits, and I'll link a, a study below that talks about much of this stuff. A lot of the benefits in my mind for fasting come from the fact that food it's very difficult to stop eating when you're hungry. And when you're in a fat loss diet, hunger is going to be elevated. But by putting a time restriction on that, you just shut your mind off to the idea of eating. You know, I'm not going to eat during these times. And then in those limited times that you're able to eat, typically you're not going to be able to consume enough calories to put yourself in a caloric surplus for an entire day. Now, there may be exceptions to that, but the point being is that you set up your diet around these parameters, you stick to that, and that allows you to create a caloric deficit without having to struggle with maybe counting calories if that bothers you, tracking your macros if that bothers you. We're all looking for a system that allows us to get to our goals with the least amount of effort possible. Am I right? So that's where fasting can be a great advantage, okay? There are plenty of good things. Now, the, the real advantage that I've seen to fasting especially in the research, is that there does seem to be some benefit to time-restricted eating based on our circadian rhythm, okay? So our bodies are gonna be better at digesting and processing foods at certain times of the day, generally during the day. At nighttime, it's not gonna go so well. So there may be some benefit to digestion and allowing the body a greater period of time between meals. So what does someone like me do that does not fast? Well, actually, I do fast. I just call it sleep. When I go to bed at night, say 10, 11 p.m., and I get up at seven in the morning, well, that's right, I've been fasting for many, many hours. So that natural fast that is broken by eating, what we call breakfast or breaking the fast, is a, tip, is a form of fasting that not a lot of us consider fasting because it's not that long of a period. But I do feel like that allows my body to get caught up and digest. If I was to wake up in the middle of the night and have a meal, I would wake up in the morning feeling stuffed, okay? So this process of fasting, there are definitely gonna be some benefits around it that are related to this process of losing body fat. However, there is no magic to fasting. If you take two people who ate the same amount of calories on a given day and do the same amount of exercise and have the same metabolic rate, one fasts, and one eats at intervals throughout the day every three or four hours, there's gonna be no difference 
in fat loss. There's also going to be no difference in metabolism, okay? Metabolism is related to the amount of calories you take in, okay? It's not the window that you take them in. So you're not going to save your metabolism or keep it running better by fasting, okay? As we lose body fat, as we lose weight, our metabolism is going to adapt to that. As you take in less calories, your body is going to adapt to that. It doesn't matter what the window is. So the last question to answer is, which is better for muscle? Which one is better? Now, I myself did some fasting last year and I documented it. I have the videos uh, if you wanna go watch them, but I'll basically give you the rundown here. I did not enjoy doing the 16-8 fast for the simple fact that at 225 pounds, I am not able to get in 250 grams of protein in that eight hour window very comfortably. I felt kind of gross trying to eat that much food. I don't have the biggest appetite naturally um, when I'm not in like contest shape or constantly doing cardio. So for me, fasting was very limiting. Now for somebody who maybe they're only eating 100 grams of protein a day or they're eating less calories, fasting might be a good way to circumvent the issues that come up with dieting meaning you're hungry throughout the day. Hunger signaling is really most closely associated with your normal pattern of eating. You're going to get hungry. If you eat every three hours, you're gonna get hungry every three hours. If you eat every five hours, you're gonna get hungry every five hours. Same with fasting. You adapt to that window. Your body will start to get hungry during that window and you'll find that you're able to avoid eating eventually outside of your normal eating pattern. So I do feel there is a value for that. It just might not have worked for me because of the amount of volume of food that I had. I did not enjoy it. I prefer to eat when I wake up. I prefer to eat right before I go to bed and at different intervals throughout the day. I also buy into the theory that we want to spike our protein synthesis as much as we can throughout the day and we need to let that rise and fall naturally, meaning every three to six hours, we need to be allowing our bodies to digest, process, and then have another large dose of protein. So for me, four is the minimum amount of meals I can do a day to hit my 250 grams of protein and still give myself that time between meals. So it didn't work for me for the eight hour window. Doesn't mean it can't work for other people, and I have seen people be successful. However, when it comes to building muscle, I would prefer to eat the way I do. I would not want to miss out on those extra feedings. How much is that going to impact someone? I don't know. It's probably hard to quantify over the lifetime of a bodybuilder. It might be negligible, but it's really not something that I'm willing to risk. As much effort as I put into the gym and into my diet, and I've found that fasting just isn't for me, I prefer it. It's how I coach people. Do I have people that use fasting? Absolutely. Okay. Just because something is right for one person doesn't mean it's right for everybody. And there are circumstances that I feel that there is value to fasting, but I just don't like the idea that there is, you know, the thought that it is somehow magical for fat loss. It is magical for muscle building. It is magical for metabolism. It may have all those benefits for you, but it doesn't mean that that's why it's working. Okay. Some people are successful in spite of what they're doing, not because, what they're doing is optimal. And I think with fasting, a lot of people find what has worked for them and they try to put out there that it should be for everybody. It's not always the case, okay? Is fasting wonderful? Absolutely. I have many people that do it and love it and couldn't handle it any other way and I applaud them and that's how we approach it. As their coach, I want the best, most consistent approach for every single one of my clients, whatever that may be. If you haven't tried both, so I suggest it. It might work great for you, but it's hard to comment on something until you've tried it. All right. So hopefully that answers your questions and I'll talk to you guys tomorrow.